Hey, I'm Chris here with 2847, the megahertz. We're gonna see what the robot's all about. They've got a pretty crazy algae thrower, some crazy fast coral storing. I'm here with Sam, Isaac, Wiley, and Illy. Let's get into this behind the bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. All right, Sam, show us this design process you guys use for this robot. All right, so one of our big goals this year was to really hit home with simplicity. So as we were going through the design process, we were kind of crossing out a lot of stuff that we wouldn't be able to do. And, uh, and that's kind of how we came up with this. Um, something interesting is that we originally got rid of deep climb because we were kind of traumatized from the trap last year. So originally we decided we wouldn't do deep climb, but then as we thought about it more, we realized that we could, we, there was a chance we could do it. And we ended up with a CAD design that same night at kickoff. So. To start it off, this is our deep climb. It's just like a simple foot that'll push down at the end. So in our matches, we have this funnel that we drive into the cage. And then as we drive in more, it'll center itself out into here. And then our other driver will press the button and this pushes down and we lift up by two or three inches. Um, another thing we wanted to do was grab the algae from the reef. So this is what this arm is for. Uh, it's able to pick up from both the low and the high. And originally we didn't want to uh, score into the barge, but after looking at this, we realized that there was some software that we were able to score into the barge after all. And uh, we'll show that later when we get to software. So then our final piece of the robot is our coral shooter. We wanted to have like a light elevator, so we didn't go too heavy on this. Uh, we just have two sets of rollers and our intake is just by gravity and momentum from the coral. So we don't need any rollers and it keeps everything light and more simple. Um, that's basically it for the design. Were there any big changes between week one and week five here? So one of the big changes I'd say was our intake. Originally we, we thought we'd have to have our intake very wide so you could score the coral through those slots. But then as we got closer to week one, we realized that you could have your hand in the chute to move it around. So um, at our first regional, there was a lot of dead spots in our intake where the coral would get stuck. And so we wanted to eliminate, eliminate that. So we made this narrower and we also made this a steeper angle. So that way the coral has more, um, we don't have to be exactly pushed up against the reef in order to intake the coral. Awesome, thank you. Now we'll head over to Isaac with some software side. So this year, at, event, at our week one in Duluth, we actually did not have any auto scoring. But so the biggest change that we've made between week one and we, this week is auto scoring. So we use Megatag 2 with our limelight to get absolute coordinates. And then we drive to say two, three on the field, and then we score. Um, another fun piece of software that we had is like Sam said, is our barge throw. Initially, our algae arm wasn't designed to score on the reef, but um, after late night testing, we had the idea to code it in, and we'll show it to you now. And that's it. Um, it's pretty simple. We actually ended up um, breaking the ceiling in our practice room because it's pretty short um, the night we tested it. That was pretty fun. Um, any questions? Were there any big software changes from week one? Again, you guys won it as Alliance captain too. Did you change a ton of stuff coming into this competition? Yeah, I'd say the biggest change now is that almost all the driving is um, autom automated. So he drives to whatever face of the reef he wants to score on, then he presses a button and it does the rest for him. And it's been really, really consistent for us as well. 
Cool, thank you. Now we'll move on to Wiley with some, uh, how did they make this thing not break throughout all their matches? All right, so one of the main ways that we did um, that we prevented breaking of the bot was to, if something fell apart or if something broke or if something um, really terrible happened, um, we would go through and revise, revise. Um, our catter would go back through and recad, redesign. And so um, one thing that um, our coach Sam Wieselman said was that, um, especially from last season compared to this season, um, this season we've had very minimal breaks. The only thing that we've had break was 3D prints. Um, but something that he said was that um, last season if a bolt fell out, we just put it right back in and continue running. This season, if a bolt fell out, we'd figure out um, where it fell out and how it fell out, and then basically to fix that problem. So we've had very minimum breakages throughout our competitions, and yeah. Awesome, thank you. Now we're gonna go down to Illy with some drive-based shenanigans. Thank you. So this year, we fo on our drive base, we focus mostly on trying to make everything look very neat. So inside of our robot, everything has been zip tied down and we have tried to make everything look as close and neat as possible. So down here on all of our uh, 3D prints, we all have little holes for all of our zip ties to go through. So that way everything will stay together and there's no loose wires or anything like that. And then over here on our battery, this big old wire right there, that one we had to manually cut and remake the wires because nothing would work for this kind of, we had to fold it and it just wasn't the right size. So we had to go in and do it all manually on all of our batteries and we had like 10 of them that we had to do. So yeah, that was all of the work that we had to do on our drive base. One amazing robot here. Thanks for watching. This has been Chris with Fun Robotics Network. Catch you on the next Behind the Bumpers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual price when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.